Hello everyone, this is Andres Restart, and this time we are talking about when Nintendo might finally decide to reveal more significant details about the successor to the Switch, what we've been calling the Nintendo Switch 2. Now that the dust is starting to settle from that epic Nintendo Direct last week, this conversation is seriously starting to stir. So today I figured I'd finally put in my prediction for when this may actually happen. But before going forward, let me ask that if you do enjoy my content, to please subscribe and hit that notification bell. So Nintendo's already told us back in early May that they will be giving us more details on the Switch 2 before the end of the fiscal year. So basically, any time between, I guess, now and the very end of March 2025, they could give us these details. And so, the somewhat concerning implication of this is that they may not tell us anything until sometime next year, and if that's the case, I believe that would also imply that we would have to wait until perhaps maybe even the end of the year for the console to come out. Which in my opinion, would be too long. But, I also don't think it's totally out of the question. There's a lot of talk right now that the value of the Japanese yen isn't so great for Nintendo right now. There's even some considerations that maybe they might increase the prices of some of their products over there. Which is concerning, especially when we think about how we're kind of thinking maybe there should be a price drop with them about to show us more details on the console. So maybe Nintendo would want to wait even longer. I'm not actually leaning in this direction, but I am trying to cover all fronts here because you never really know what's going to happen until it happens. After all, we had all of these reports from all these credible, reputable sites that the console would be coming out in 2024. And at this stage, it's pretty clear that that is definitely not happening. But of course, in the beginning of the year, those reports, those sites all changed. They said there was an update or a delay and the console's now not coming out until 2025, the current target being March, but some sites saying that March would just be the earliest date, leaving an opening for it to happen even later, which is the concerning part. But the point is, is that the overall consensus from most reports is that the Switch 2 is at least currently aimed for March of 2025. So then, if that is the case, again, maybe that will change, maybe all these sites that are supposedly credible and reputable are wrong, but assuming they're not, then I think we're looking at a scenario that's very similar to how things went down for the Nintendo Switch. We knew about it as the NX console in 2015 and 2016, but in October of 2016 they gave us a teaser trailer, a 3 plus minute trailer that showcased the console and some games running on it, they gave us a good understanding of what to expect, and then they gave us a big presentation in the January of 2017, and then the console came out March of 2017, the very beginning. So conceivably, we could see something similar this time around as well. We get a teaser this October, and then a big presentation in January, and then the console comes out in March. I don't think that's totally out of the question. But I am expecting things to go a bit differently. And there's a couple different reasons. One, if Nintendo does want to hit their sales targets for this fiscal year, which are still pretty high, slightly lower than last year, but still relatively lofty considering how late we are into the generation, I think Nintendo is going to need to start issuing price drops, not just for their consoles, but also their games. And if they're going to be doing this, they would have to announce this before the holidays. So if you put out a teaser trailer for the console in October, you might would have wanted to have had a price drop before that point. And so maybe they could do the price drop before they showcase the console, but I do kind of think that with a price drop being needed across the board here, perhaps Nintendo's plans for showcasing the system may be coming a bit sooner. But there's another reason I have for this, and it's because it's expected that there's going to be a lot more third-party support this time around at the beginning for Switch 2, for a variety of reasons. At the beginning of this year, we talked about from that GDC survey that there was a lot of different developers already suggesting that they wanted to put in support. We've heard many rumors about a lot of different games. From everything we've heard about this console and what we're expecting, it's going to be a console that's going to be able to run a significant amount of AAA games. The talk has been that the Switch 2 would be comparable to the Xbox Series S, which is powerful enough to run all multi-platform games, pretty much. 
And so considering that the Switch 2 may be at that level, but also falling up the Switch with this form factor and all, it has the sales potential of the Switch. So third parties might be looking at the Switch 2 as essentially the perfect place to put their games on. Point being, many think third party support is going to be very strong and announcements need to start happening. It's not like it was with the Switch where Nintendo was coming off of the Wii U where they lost any sort of third party support they would have because the Wii U sucked and Nintendo already had a poor history of having third party support. By the way, when I say the Wii U sucked, I mean in terms of sales, not in terms of the console itself. I liked it. I'm a hardcore Nintendo fan. But Nintendo didn't have a lot of third party support back then and going into the Switch, Nintendo had to earn that third party support throughout the generation. But now Nintendo's in good standing. Now the expectation is that the Switch 2 is going to fault the Switch quite well. So third parties are going to want to hit the ground running here and take advantage of those early generation sales. So these third parties may be pressuring Nintendo to announce the console sooner so they can start making the announcements for their games. And so because of this, I still think the Switch 2 would be coming out this March. But I don't think they'll give us a teaser in October, I think it's going to happen a bit sooner. And looking at Nintendo's current release slate, we'll notice something interesting. There is no game set for August. Typically we get a Direct in September, Tokyo Game Show's in September, Gamescom is at the end of August. I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance that we have a reveal for the Switch 2 in August. I've mentioned September multiple times in some of my videos, but now that I'm sitting down and thinking a little bit more about it, I find August to be quite a curious time to maybe do it. Especially because in July, we don't exactly have anything that's extremely hype and noteworthy. Yes, I know some people are excited for Nintendo World Championships NES Edition, but let's also be real. This is a smallish game that has a relatively low budget that's going to appeal to some people, but is not going to be this massively popular release. Nintendo World Championships NES Edition, prove me wrong. I'd love to see it. Anyways, the main point I'm getting at here is that there's going to be a couple months of some relative quiet from Nintendo. It might make sense to have something pretty big happen in August to keep the conversation going, before getting into the final months of the year where we have some pretty significant releases. So yes, I think August makes a lot of sense to have our initial teaser. They give us that teaser, they say there will be more details before the end of the fiscal year, perhaps like the big reveal presentation, maybe January again. And it's also in August where they announce the price drops and different things like that going into September, October, November, where they have their different games and hardware sales and such. I think that's the prediction I'm going to make. If more evidence presents itself that steers me in a different direction, sure, we'll update on it. But that is what I'm thinking. Now, I recognize there are going to be some counter arguments here. You look at the games we have. We have The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom in September, Super Mario Party Jamboree in October, Mario and Luigi Brothership in November. Some people are going to argue that maybe you shouldn't announce anything related to Switch 2 until after the holidays because that would butcher sales. And this is just where I disagree. I think Nintendo has been very strategic about the kinds of games they have chosen to come out during this period of time. We're looking at a 2D Zelda game starring Princess Zelda, we're looking at a Mario Party game, and we're looking at Mario & Luigi, a comeback to a series that was on handhelds. None of these games are sporting incredibly ambitious budgets or wide scope graphics or anything like that. I'm not saying they aren't pretty games, they all are. But as I've discussed a few times already, they are not the kind of games that you're going to fire up on your Nintendo Switch and think, man, I really wish I could run this on a console with a 1440p or 4k resolution with ray tracing and different extra bells and whistles. No, it's Mario Party, it's 2D Zelda, it's Mario and Luigi. These are the kind of games you would have saw on a Nintendo handheld when Nintendo would be about to announce a new console for the home console side of things. But we are in a different time now where Nintendo focuses on one single platform. I think a lot of people like to look towards the past to try and figure out what's going to happen and I think that's something very important because it's something I do. I think it definitely gives us some value perspective on what to expect. But also we have to take into account the current climate, the different conditions of today as opposed to the past. 
In the past, Nintendo had two different divisions, the handheld division and the home console division. Now it's just the one, the Switch. And a big piece to Nintendo's success throughout this entire generation has been consistent releases throughout. And we fully expect the Switch to maintain momentum even a couple years into the Switch 2's life, the same way they handled the 3DS. So the point is, Nintendo's not going to have this moment in time where they're going to stop releasing games for the Switch, then announce the Switch 2, just have months where they have nothing, and then release the Switch 2. That's not how it's going to work. How things are going to work is that Nintendo's going to find the right way to continue strong support of the Switch and maintain healthy sales as they transition over to the Switch 2. While there's still support coming to the Switch, they start pushing the Switch 2. Let's go back to October of 2016 when Nintendo showed us that trailer for the Nintendo Switch. Looking at the Wii U and their published games, in October, they released Paper Mario Color Splash. And that was pretty much it. The Wii U was a dead console basically, but they still had a published game in October a couple weeks before the teaser for the Nintendo Switch. However, the 3DS, which was a very significant healthy console at the time, it was Nintendo's really only significant breadwinner at that time outside of like, I don't know, Pokemon Go. They published a few games during this period of time. Disney Magic World 2, they published that. They also published Mario Party Star Rush in November, and then there was also Pokemon Sun and Moon, and even Super Mario Maker for the 3DS in December. So there was actually a decent amount of support for the 3DS, not too different from what we're seeing of the Switch right now. Arguably, if you account for Pokemon, the support was a lot stronger for the 3DS during that period of time, and they still announced the Nintendo Switch, which was not only a follow-up to the Wii U, but also the 3DS. It's a handheld console, and it's a handheld console that's vastly more powerful than the 3DS. If we're talking about some of the biggest jumps in tech from Nintendo from generation to generation, sure, if you look at the jump from Wii U to Switch, it's not that significant, but when you look at it from 3DS to Switch, it's enormous, arguably the largest jump ever. And Nintendo wasn't concerned about bastardizing 3DS sales during this period of time. They still showcased the Switch. So for those thinking that Nintendo won't show anything until after the holidays, I don't think there's really any precedent for that. If anything, to the contrary. But also, let's operate under this possibility that maybe Nintendo does wait until after the holidays. If the console is to be releasing in March, then you probably would have to do a reveal in January. Except that would be an even crazier turnaround than the Switch because at least we knew what the console was a few months beforehand. Literally telling us everything all in one go in January to have a six to seven week turnaround for the console in March doesn't make much sense in my opinion. And I think it makes even less sense if they don't show us or tell us anything let people spend what they want during the holidays, and then showcase things in January. You don't do that. That's not a good look for the brand. See, back for the Nintendo Switch, because they gave us that teaser in October going to the holidays, people were making informed decisions on their purchases knowing full well that a new console was just a few months away. Having an entire reveal in January, the month after December, you don't do that. Of course, if you really want to believe that Nintendo wouldn't announce anything during the holidays or close to it, it's because the system isn't coming out in March, it's coming out later into the year. In which case, if you wait a few months, then yeah, sure, you can put out a presentation and the console's coming out closer to the holidays of 2025. Which, going back to what I was saying earlier, I don't think that's a good idea for Nintendo's financials. We're already looking at a fourth year of declining sales. If they wait even more time to release the Switch 2, we're looking at a scenario where we're going to see a fifth year of declining sales. And I just don't think that's the best idea. I'm not saying it's out of the question, I'm just saying I wouldn't predict it. So going back to what I was predicting, I'm thinking August makes a lot of sense for the reasons I suggested earlier. And everything that I've seen from Nintendo so far, in my opinion, does support the thinking that we're going to get some sort of significant teaser or reveal of this calendar year. Something else I noticed about the most recent Nintendo Direct, they gave us a release dates for all the games coming out this year, which makes sense. They've done that in the past. I looked at the prior June Direct and that's what they did. 
after the June Direct, we knew about the holiday lineup with specific release dates. We knew what day of the month we were going to be getting these games. But there was one curious difference. And that difference was that they told us about a published title in this Direct that's coming out next year with a exact release date. And that is Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. It's releasing January 16th. It's not weird for Nintendo to give us a release year in a Direct. They did that with Metroid Prime 4. They've done this many times in the past. But to talk about a game more than a half year in advance with a specific release date is peculiar to me. And if anything, I think it supports the notion that Switch 2 is coming out in March. Because currently we're looking at a lineup that is the ideal lineup of games that Nintendo would put on Switch before they're about to put out a console. A variety of games that you don't really need a more powerful console to fully enjoy, and simple, not so ambitious remasters in the January before a potential March release. This is what I've been predicting, and this is how it's looking. Notice how the one game that was in the Direct from Nintendo that we feel there should be a cross-gen version for is the one game from Nintendo that did not receive a release date. That's Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Things are lining up here. And while I recognize a lot of people kind of feel that we could have another General Nintendo Direct because of how good that General Direct was for Switch 1, but maybe it's best that the last Switch 1 focused Nintendo Direct ends on a high. Does Nintendo really want to wait until the point where their Directs are just mid regardless until they start showing Switch 2 things? I don't know if they'd like to do that. I think they're at a point right now where they could have a pretty nice smooth transition over. With what's been announced so far, they can get to March. They don't need to make any more announcements for Switch 1. Of course, I'm sure there will be. I think there probably will still be some kind of Direct in September. Maybe a Direct Mini. They'll announce a couple of other remasters and things like that that will come out in the early parts of 2025 for Switch 1. But before we even get that Direct Mini, I think Nintendo would announce the Switch 2 in August before we typically get a Direct in September. So that's what I'm currently thinking, that is what I'm currently predicting, but what do you think? Am I onto something here, or do you have different ideas? Let me know in the comments below. This is Andres Restart, thank you so much for listening and watching, and I'll see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.